So I uh, want to just open up a little bit to some conversation, and I see Karen's question about how capital is an example of how capitalism contributes to inequities. Um, thank you for asking that, and I'm actually going to invite that question for anyone else here who has some thoughts about that. Um, anyone want to share an example about how capitalism contributes to inequities as a way of helping us? Share some understanding. Who can get into higher level? Yes, who has access to opportunities to have wealth and material? Yes, that's definitely part of it. Generational wealth. Thank you, Greg. Yes. So that structural piece of kind of how history has been set up with policies, with legal, who had, has had access to resources or not, to education or not, how that leads to a possibility for generational wealth um, for some and not others. Paying low wages, not having stores in certain areas. Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you, McKenna, for that too. Also, just the kind of narrative of capitalism of our inherent worth is about how much we can accumulate and acquire, uh, as opposed to um our humanity. Yep. Relying there, and Lana, thank you for also just naming that kind of the the growth of how uh top owners have had in, enormous wealth gains while minimum wage has grown just slightly and people are still, the people doing all the work in those companies are are not having access to wealth and opportunity. Casey, I see your hand. Yeah, I have a simple example that I often use. Um, I'm at the point in my life now where I make enough money that I can go to Costco. So mm -hmm. because I can buy 12 rolls of paper towel at a time, I can pay much less for mm -hmm. things because I can afford to pay more upfront. I save money in the long run. Whereas people who are experiencing poverty can't do that. Absolutely. Thank you. Great example. Yes. Food desert. Mm -hmm. Chris has his hand up as well. Oh, thank you, Chris. Please go ahead. Yeah, I was trying to put this in text, but it's proving difficult. Um, in an organization where you're needing money to come in um, to, you know, just function, right? In our society, like we need the money to pay everyone and all of those things. But um, sometimes folks at the top of the ladder are making decisions that might have concessions or impacts or ways that we, you know, need to be flexible, even like overly flexible to accommodate to get that money from mm -hmm. some client or something like that. But then the people at the top um, who may, be white, right? They're not the ones actually living out the concessions and the other things. Those impacts will land with people further down the ladder. Um, and in my experience with, you know, my black colleagues often have to sort of pay those concession costs in order to support the organization getting that money coming in when they didn't make the concession themselves in the first place, right? Somebody higher up said, oh, sure, yeah, we can do that, mm -hmm. right? Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Appreciate also that connection. And, and uh, I said, Yako, the connection to kind of capitalism's racial since its inception, right? That the idea of building wealth and who has access to uh, wealth and goods, right, is when people have committed genocide, genocide and displaced people off of land so that they can own that land and create the wealth and goods that come from that, right? When we people actually through the chattel slavery, right, have decided that they have some right to own other humans and force them to work and uh, under oppressive, abusive, uh, horrific reality conditions, while they make profit from what those workers do. The
appreciate also that connection and, and uh, I said Yako, the connection to kind of capitalism's racial since its inception, right? That the idea of building wealth and who has access to uh, wealth and goods, right, is when people have committed genocide and displaced people off of land so that they can own that land and create the wealth and goods that come from that, right? When we people actually through the chattel slavery, right, have decided that they have some right to own other humans and force them to work and uh, under oppressive, abusive, uh, horrific reality conditions, while they make profit from what those workers do, that all of that is connected. Um, and it's important as we are thinking about leading for equity, we're, we're again, continuing to sharpen our lens, seeing those connections to both structural, institutional, and then also what that means um, personally and interpersonally. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all this. Um, if I may, um, Karen, look, look at what your thoughtful question got going in that exchange. Thank you for asking it. How are you doing? Um, how you doing, Karen? Is that helpful? Help? Helpful? Awesome. Great. All right. Want to end this section before we take a little stretch break with this quote from Mia Birdsong, and I'd love to hear maybe a voice we haven't heard yet to bring this to life, if you'd be willing. So Someone be willing to unmute. And share I can this. do it. Thank you. Uh, this is Annie. Capitalism, patriarchy, and white supremacy, all of which create offshoots like ableism, transphobia, ageism, and others, are embedded in the systems and institutions we all interact with. Everything from housing to healthcare to media to jobs to education, but they are also embedded in each of us. Mia Birdsong, activist author. Thank you, Annie. Appreciate that. We want to <clears throat> close out this section with it, just this provocation uh, about, about the mirror and the window and, and how we think about both what is still within us that we need to unearth, we need to shed, we need to kind of heal from in certain ways, and how do we also continue to work with others to be able to see where this is playing out embedded in interactions and in policies and practices and um, design decisions in, um, in law, whatever it may be, to be able to say, are we seeing, are we making meaning of what's happening here? Can we see how this is playing out and what is ours to do to create a more just and liberated world? So uh, with that, we want to offer you a, a quick stretch break. We'll have another longer break a, a little bit later. We we'll want to take five minutes, which will put us at six minutes after the hour. Um, please move away from your screens. Do not check emails right now. Stretch your legs, get your water or food, whatever you need, and we'll be back at six minutes after the hour. I'm so happy right now. I'm so happy. I need nothing else today. They said everything. They said everything. They said everything I needed them to say, and then they followed it up with a quote about how capitalism is responsible for all the world's problems, including transphobia and ableism. And I don't want anyone to ever ask again, do these people know if they're talking about capitalism? Because when I just said, can you explain to me how capitalism creates inequities? They had a whole fucking discussion among not only the presenters, but all of the workshop participants talking about how capitalism creates inequities. They all know. They all know. They didn't need to be prompted. They all know. How do they all know this? Because this is like the 11,000th training that all of them have done about this. They all fucking know. I'm so happy right now. No I'm so happy. No I'm, I just like. It feels, it feels, it feels. I'm, I'm just gonna have a meme moment, okay? We're on a break. You can go get a coffee if you want to. This, it, it, It's like when we were watching that six hour socialism conference for Socialism Saturday, and they said everything that I've been saying for years, and it's just so effing validating. It's so validating. All of the goddamn conservatives have called me crazy. They've all lied to their audiences, and I was right all along. Oh my god. 